Chris contacted me one day and he was uh, an avid user of bog pod and he needed a spare part for one of the six and one thing led to another as hunters get to talking and uh, turns out he was an outfitter in New Mexico and it just started from there and I started researching how many elk they've killed and it, it, if you visit their website it really is impressive the amount of elk they kill and the quality of elk they kill here down in New Mexico. Last year we came out here, uh, I was fortunate enough to draw a public land tag in Unit 36 and came down hunted with Chris, had a great time, uh, the bulls were in some fun rugged country and uh, we ended up killing a really nice bull and yeah, couldn't wait to get back here. Kyle had come down last year with Chris and hunted, I think it was Unit 36 and they got into some good ones last year and I was just super excited to get down here and hunt with Chris, he's a well respected outfitter puts guys on big bulls and, and just had a, a blast. I think we're within an hour of camp. A uh, little nice shooting range up here. You know, come down, see if we're zeroed in, make sure everything's right on. Uh, check our dope at one and 300 and just kind of make sure that what we've got on our chart is lining up with what's actually happening. Uh, we're gonna get to camp probably one o'clock today, get ready, maybe do some scouting tonight and then see what we can get into tomorrow. I'm sorry. We just got in camp today. Uh, got everything unpacked and put in the wall tents. Uh, we checked the zero on the rifles. Everything's good there. Uh, we checked out a couple of good bulls that some people in camp shot, and they're still bugling. Uh, there's a, quite a bit of rut activity, so we're really looking forward to the morning. I think. So Joe, were you headed to a moose hunt? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Start over. We're gonna get to a vantage point in the morning and glass use the great divides and try and pick up some bulls and, and make a move on them so we're excited man there's uh, a lot of great bulls in this area it's a great unit and uh, we got two tags so we're gonna make it happen <laughs> i'm shooting your stars now Day one, we got on a great bull right away. We could hear him bugling, and you know, as these guys do, and as Chris does, he used his experience with the land to kind of work around. And we popped up right on a ridge, and that bull was just standing there about six, seven hundred yards. Uh, he was an awesome bull. Uh, Chris was confident that we could find something better. I mean, it's a great mature bull. It's just probably not a bull we want to mess with this morning. It's a good mature bull, first day, probably not a shooter. But it's, it's one to just let walk, I think, at this point. You know, we'll just kind of, we're looking now for just, there's not a lot of bugling right in here, that right where we're at, so we're just gonna cut a glass. All these little north face cuts across his face here and see if we can find something for this afternoon. We worked back towards the truck and ended up spotting a really good bull, and uh, we put him to bed, and that made for a really cool hunt that evening. You should shoot this bull. Yes. This morning. We were about two miles back, and we glassed a real nice, what looked to be a good bull, come up over the ridge, feeding into the wind, and drop into this cut. So what we need to do is figure out our best approach. I've got a pretty good idea on how to come in on this bull, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep an eye on the wind, expecting the thermals to change about the time we find this bull to shoot. Him. So we're gonna have to get to where we're downwind now, and when the thermals change, we're in a good position for a shot. But it looked like a pretty good bull this morning. He's in a great spot. He's in a nice little cut. He's in a bowl, isolated. So as long as we don't run into too many landmines on the way in, we'll be good to go. Yeah. We're gonna go about two miles out of our way to hook around and get our approach just perfect. And actually, we're gonna try to come up on that knob right there. Okay. And if we can come up on that knob, if he starts to bugle, we can either cut around and get below him if he comes down, or if he just gets up and feeds in the trees, we can cut through that tree line across the top.
Later in the day, we come back, we set up exactly where Chris thought he'd come out, and sure enough, he pops out. If he can go up the elevation of this ridge before we get to that ridge, we can go in the truck. So we gotta go. We're just gonna have to go for it. Jason was up to bat still, and Chris had a really good idea where that bull was bedded. So we snuck up and we got fortunate enough that he bugled in his bed when he stood up. I think he bugled when he stood up and he gave his location away. So Chris knew right where he was and uh, we made a great stalk, ended up within 300 yards of the bull. He was just a big, big bodied mature bull. And uh, I sat there and I was on the gun three different times and I just couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger on him. He was a really nice bull, great mass, great width, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. So it, I made a hard decision. That's not ever an easy decision when you've got a 300 inch bull there, but uh, ended up being something that I would uh, be happy with later. After we got on that bull, uh, Jason decided to pass. He was on the gun, had him in his scope, and you know, it was the first day. We're all excited to be here and we want this to, to last as long as possible and uh, he just elected not to shoot that bull and look for another one the next day. So the morning of day two, we went back to the exact same spot. Obviously there was a couple big bulls in the area. He knew of another five by six that was probably running 320, which I was kind of got my hopes up on. Uh, as we get out there, we just, we started seeing a lot of bulls that were probably a mile or two out and just nothing of any size. That next morning was really slow. Uh, we only saw a few elk and then Chris called an audible and took us to a new location and Jason was up to bat and I was kind of just caddying back and forth uh, on the UTV. So I sat that hunt out. But Chris had a really good idea where these bulls were bedded with the north wind, a uh, place called the Honey Hole, and it lived up to a standard. Just kind of made a decision to go to a different place. So that evening we make our trek up the, the, uh, the mountains, just make our way to the top so we can work through these canyons. Uh, we ended up going to a spot that Chris calls the Honey Hole, and, and we found out later why. There's two way up at the top. I can't tell what they are. The one looks like a bull, it's real light colored, but it's hanging out with a cow and it doesn't look a lot bigger bodied, so I would assume it's probably a spike or a juvenile bull. But we're gonna go up here, kinda nose. This little saddle just past us here, they like to bed. As they went along, we ended up seeing that there were three bulls of that group, and there was a big five by five with that group too. And it was, it was again, it was big, but it's just not what we're looking for. Passed up a shot on him at about two, maybe 250. Uh, but as he worked his way across the ridge, a big six by six came out. He just kind of, there was a lot of commotion and he didn't know what was going on. And he just knew there were some bulls in his area and he didn't appreciate it. So he came working down the other, other side of that ravine and started running bulls off. We made some moves to get, you know, cut the distance down and get to a spot where we could actually make a safe and ethical shot got within about 400 yards of this bull. We got the sticks up, had the death grip ultralight, locked the rifle in and steadied up for a 350 yard shot. He sees you. Take him when you can.
can't believe. Dude, that was nothing. I can't believe that just happened. We think it is. I didn't have regret about passing the bull, but anytime that you do that, it's just a hard decision and, and you hope that it's not one that comes back to bite you. And a crazy good experience out here. Great bulls could not be happier and can't wait to come back. Jason tagged out that night. Uh, it's a great bull. We packed it out and you know I knew I was up to bat the next day, so I kind of transitioned my mind to get into to hunt mode instead of just glassing and scouting. So uh, that was exciting for me that next night I was really looking forward to getting behind the gun.